Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's Bindo with Robert Hollinshead. And good day to you, Bob. I know we got a uh, not a public service announcement, kind of a dealer service announcement on a situation that happened last week. Um, I'm just scratching the surface, so if I interrupt you and ask you questions, um, please fire away, Sean. Forgive. Good morning okay, to you, brother. Stop. Good morning, everybody. So let, what happened? What, let's dive in. So it's it's kind of weird, right? And it it really hits home. So from the beginning of time, everybody knows you go on a, a, a demo ride. You got to be careful who you're taking, and you send the salesperson because if you give them the car and they take the car and don't bring it back, it's not really a stolen car. And then salesperson there, you put a gun in his head and tell him to get out of the car and leave. And all that. so all different variations. Uh, they you know somebody goes into the key box in the in the uh, in the uh, on the side of the service department and grabs a bunch of keys. Next thing you know, this weekend they open up the fence and to drive 15 cars where it's stolen. Right. But this one, this one here actually hit me a little, I'm, I'm naive. I understand that, but it hit me a little by, by surprise. And the, I would call it the, I don't want to use the word ingenious methodology is, is kind of like shocking as well. Um, and then, you, you know, you can start the speculation. I did a little post on uh, uh, Facebook about this and that. And everybody, oh, it's an, it's an inside job. I said, no, no, no. It's the trucker. No, 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 no. So I sell a car on the auction block to a very good customer of ours from Brooklyn, New York. They, you know, they buy typically like a nice, what you would call maybe a high line car. I think they buy specifically for customers that they have. And they trust us and they like us and they, you know, we, we sell them a lot of cars, not a lot, but a lot. Uh, and, you know, here's a 20, 20 something, 22, whatever, Porsche turbo something or other, right? So we'll name whatever it is. It's a hundred and something thousand dollar car, right? And, you know, uh, we have the CR done like we do with all cars, uh, you know, prior to the auction, obviously, if you don't have a CR, the probability of selling a car is very low. So pull the keys out, take a picture of the keys, books, things, colors, things, dents, whatever, right? Uh, options, right? And to, obviously, it's very clear that the, the car shows two keys sitting on the roof. That's the way they do RCRs, or I ask them to put a, put the keys up so it's no question. Keys are there. Keys aren't there, either one. So we know what we got, cat or dog, right? And, you know, before COVID, we had an army of 35 or 40 people um, out in the lot guarding our cars because for years, you know, during the whole export thing, um, um, for years, it was not unusual that you would lose 50 or 60 sets of keys out on the, on the parade ground the day before the auction. You park your cars, you line them up, you shine the piss out of them, you're right all over top of them, right? And next thing you know, if you don't have them guarded all night long, you'd come back and you'd have out of all your hundred Lexuses, 27 of them wouldn't have a key. And nobody needs to know what happens after that. It's a, it's a total tragedy, right? And then you see them on eBay the following day. Somebody's selling them on eBay, right? Okay. The fobs for 300 a piece. And then they were doing it with, you know, the halogen headlights and so forth like that. So this is irrelevant to the story. Um, but but it's kind of like relevant to the story. So CR is done. Guy does his shopping, has a customer for the car. Absolutely, he's going to buy the car. Of course, we don't sell cars outside before the auction. So there's conversation. We let it sell to the market, to the best end user, based on who's willing to buy it. We wish them all, everybody, to make ten or 20000 a car when they take them home and sell them. That's what we do. Uh, we, that's how we get people coming back to buy more, right? That's simple shit. Okay. He is the last bidder, picks the car up, drives down, picks the car up, and drives it back to deliver it uh, the following day. On his way uh, out the gate, he memorialized with the with the uh, with the uh, go gate. Go you know, the, not that anybody cares at the gate when you're giving them a gate pass, but he you know says that there was only one key, and um, you know, so I guess you know he want somebody else to get another key or something. And probably would make our effort to do that, right? But as he's driving down the Pennsylvania Turnpike, going back to New Jersey, Turnpike, go back to New York, um, the um, the notification comes up on the uh, on his phone that it, you know it's it's got one of these tracking devices uh, showing up on the car. So somebody went to the auction. 
decided which car they would like to steal. Stole a key, left, put in the Apple uh, uh, tracking device, which you can, you know, the AirTag, which you can buy for, I guess, yeah, the AirTag, which is like, what do you get, the four of them for a hundred bucks? So if somebody invested four or five hundred dollars, they could put them in fifteen or twenty cars. Um, when the car is actually sold, if somebody's a dealer and could log in and watch simulcast that it got sold and actually see who it sold to, because it comes up on simulcast who, who bought the car, right? Um, and then let that little baby, you know, make its way back to where it is. It's you're no longer stealing it from the auction. And the car is delivered to the retail customer the following day, right? And the next evening, um, on the customer's home security system, they see a person walk up to the car, watch the lights flash, which means they have the key, hop in and drive away. No broken windows, no fancy computer, you know, screwdrivers, a Hyundai Kia, put the screwdriver and turn the thing. And next thing you know, the car's driving and we can steal all the Kias and Hyundais in the world. Nope. Mm. And of course, you got, you're not going to put in something and do some silly thing. And you're not going to walk up to the car where the uh, security alarm goes off uh, and uh, hop in the car and disappear. So there you have a scenario, which to me, like I say, it hits home a little bit, right? How do you protect yourself? What are you going to do? Lock down the lot where you don't let anybody on the lot any longer? I mean, when we had an army of people protecting our cars, dealers stopped coming to our cars to steal things because they knew we had a million people there uh, watching our stuff. It had to because it was, you know, if it cost you 30 grand a week to have people standing around doing that, it's it's way less than it would cost you if you, if you wound up having no keys for 38 cars, right? In this case, how do you protect yourself from somebody walking up to a car, uh, popping their head in the window, pulling the extra key? Well, oh, so we're going to pull the keys out of, tomorrow we got 700 cars here. We're going to pull the extra key out of every car, keep them somewhere. What will happen in that case, we could do it, uh, but nobody's ever going to get the other key. Um, the 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 uh, let's call it the um, administration of that would be next to impossible. You could never ask the auction to do it, right? And so you know, basically, we're laying there nude, um, looking to become a victim because your cars are there, ready to go to the auction. Dealers want both sets of keys. Um, um, how do you resolve that? Uh, and I, I don't really see it. To me, this is a the new, really very, in, I don't want to call it intelligence, but a near flawless system of stealing cars. Now, the, if that car went back to Brooklyn, what's the probability it's riding around on a joy ride after somebody went through the trouble going to the auction 120 miles away, doing going through the whole process, and then just uh, they're going to just joy ride that car through Manhattan tomorrow? I don't think so. That little baby's inside a container in Port Elizabeth getting ready to float off to, you know, someplace exotic, right? Um, and um, I guess, you, you know, I don't even know how you make dealers aware of what, what you would do uh, about the uh, circumstance other than the fact that if you're getting a notice, this is the fault of our customer. When you get the notice from uh, Apple that you have an air tag. And he got out of the car, actually, looked for the air tag. It's way too small. You're not going to find it if it's properly placed underneath a bumper cover or some whatever, right? That you take a snapshot so then you could get the IP address of whoever it is that is sending the uh, the signal where you could actually backtrack it and then somebody's balls are in a vice, right? Or, or much closer to be in a vice. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. um, once you get that notification, you don't want to just ignore it hop out of the car, slide off the side of the road, hop out of the car and go, go do a Sherlock Holmes on the uh, Apple AirTag. Now you'd want to memorialize it, I think, in order to uh, know, uh, to be able to backtrack uh, where, uh, who sent that signal. Does that make sense to you, Sean? It does. It, what, what I'm, and I'm just thinking about how organized these uh, criminals are is, I would I would assume or I would guess that maybe they would have had to watch the lane and see where this dealer no. purchased it. No, 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 you don't have to, Sean. You don't have to. If you put five of them in and you, let's just say, I'm not 
disparaging uh, New York City, but let's say you're in New York City and you're lucky enough that that car came back to New York City, right? Uh, you just track the ones you want to go get. You already got the keys. Yeah. You already know where exactly where they are. If you're energetic, you might go to Washington, D.C. and get one or go to Columbus, Ohio and get one because that's where it wound up going. You follow me? Um, uh, and uh, I don't think they have to be anywhere other than going to the lot to steal the steal it and implant the uh, air, air tag. Uh, and then you could go home, put your feet up and watch simulcast, wait for that number to come through. It's already on this condition report, what time it's running, where who it is, all the rest of that, right? And uh, when it's sold, you know that uh, it's time to track that bitch. Yeah. yeah you see is, what I'm saying? Uh, so, so everyone just needs to get an iPhone, step one. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Uh, just, to, just to get alerts now. I mean, if, the, if it's happened once, it's probably happened way more times than that. And That's the only reason that I really, you know, I put a little couple posts out. Nobody really cares. Uh, just to see if it's happened to other people, because if 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 this is unique to us, see the other thing is that I again smart teeth, they wait a day or two days or three days uh, in order to do the attack, so you don't necessarily associate the whole auction situation with the th with the theft of the car. It's different jurisdiction, different state, you know. So which police do you call? All the rest of that. It 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 it. it it goes from arithmetic to trigonometry in terms of unwinding it. You follow me? Um, and um, uh, it, it makes it more uh, closer to a, an excellent crime, right? And if other people it's happened to, because the dealer community is very small, I mean, it's very tight, actually. Um, you know, people talk one to the other to the other to the other. If others are, you know, it's happening to them also. You know, I think the probability of accumulate, accumulating the circumstances and where the cars are stolen and all the rest of it, maybe somebody did catch the air tag number and all the rest, right? It, it'd be a probability that we could, you know, shut this down a little bit before it becomes something weird. If they're successful with this, I guarantee it's happening again this week. Yeah. Like if that car just yeah. disappeared, hopped in the container, and it's off to wherever, uh, um, you know. Um, they're coming back for another one today, right? Yeah. And if it happens in a way where we don't have a broader sense of communication with the people that it's happening to, um, the probability is going to increase is algebraically high, right? Uh, because it's successful. They don't damage anything. It's easy as pie. You don't have to be a genius to do it. Um, it, it could get weird, you know? So I just thought it was a topic for, for dealers to, uh, since that's the only people that would be silly enough to listen to what we got to blabber, um, it seems to me it's not a bad thing to not be aware of it, at least. And maybe we catch somebody that it's happened to also and they can communicate with us, you know. That's all. Thank you for doing this. Great. Thank it's you, our, Bob. It's our pleasure, Well, See you guys and girls.